Welcome back to Beer View TV viewers. Chris Nichols here, and we are going to revisit our high res full frame mirrorless shootout today. And I say revisit because since our last high res shootout, a lot has changed. Sony now have their A7R4. They've upped the megapixel game again. Canon have just released their R5 camera, their new flagship mirrorless. And Nikon have also revamped the Z7 to now the Z7 version 2. In fact, the only camera we're looking at today that has been in the previous video is the Panasonic S1R, but even it has been updated with a major firmware adjustment. I think that background's too distracting. Tell me, it's the only color we're gonna find, it's that or snow. So we're gonna open things up here with Gaia slash Mother Earth, who's probably more disappointed than that mural suggests right now. But uh, we're gonna start off with ergonomics. And in number four place, it's gonna be the Sony a7R 4 Although they did improve the autofocus on button and the joystick, this is still before their new menu improvements. So it's the old convoluted menu system and their touchscreen interface is incredibly limited. All the cameras here above this point, it's a very tough call. They're very good because in number three place, it's the Nikon Z7 II, which we actually praise for its ergonomics. I like the way it looks. The grip is great. A lot of the buttons feel good, but unfortunately we still just have one axis tilting screen here and the buttons in the front here, Jordan hates them. They're a little squishy. So yeah, it's a close call, but the camera above this can just do a little bit more. In the number two position, it's gonna to go to the Panasonic S1R. You have to be okay with the heavier weight, but you're getting a solid grip, fantastic customizability, lots of buttons. It has an excellent touchscreen interface and the screen not only tilts, but also has this flip out option so that if you're doing vertical compositions, you can still use it. Overall, I feel like the S1R just gives you a little bit more customizability and edge and handling. Out of all the cameras, the Canon EOS R5, I feel, has the most refined and well-balanced ergonomics. It's not overly heavy. It's got an excellent grip, fantastic feeling buttons. I like the fully articulating LCD panel over the tilt panels. This camera also has three control dials, which proves over its SLR roots. It's a great menu system and touchscreen interface as well, so it really just checks a lot of boxes. We're gonna talk about displays next, and very apropos, we're gonna use Jordan's favorite color dichotomy, gold with teal. It's, oh. it's his, yeah, it's his favorite. Bug him about it on Twitter. Now in number four, when it comes to displays, it has to be the Nikon Z7 II. Although a 3.69 million dot EVF is still very decent, and it has an excellent 2.1 million dot LCD panel, we're still talking the lowest resolution EVF out of the bunch, and a 60 frame per second refresh rate that easily holds us back. In third place, it's gonna be the Sony a7R 4 but it's not that much better than the Nikon. Although we do get a nicer 5.76 million dot EVF, it is only using that highest resolution in playback mode, not really when you're shooting. As well, we have a low res LCD panel on the back here. So this is gonna be firmly third place. Now there's no second place because we have a tie for first place. The R5 and the S1R both have 5.76 million dot EVFs with high refresh rates. Both use very nice 2.1 million dot back panels. And so really the choice just becomes, do you want the fully articulating LCD of the Canon or the tilt screen of the Panasonic S1R? Next category is autofocus. Panasonic S1R is gonna be in fourth place. Panasonic is still haunted by the specter of contrast detect only autofocus, but I do wanna mention that the firmware update here made a vast improvement in that look of shakiness when you're shooting. It's actual continuous focusing with moving subject hit rate is very high, and it is a good eye detect camera as well. However, we still find if you use wide aperture primes that sometimes you're a little bit off, and with high res cameras, your autofocus has to be bang on. In third place, it's gonna to go to the Nikon Z7 II. Now, although this has their latest firmware, which dramatically improves the eye detect autofocus and the dual processors give us good low light performance as well, we are still finding that the tracking autofocus sometimes loses subjects. And we also find that we have to switch back and forth between multiple modes in the right situation. Now that's not inherently a problem, except that the cameras above this often can do everything in only one mode and that keeps things nice and simple. In second place, it's the Canon EOS R5. This is actually one of the most improved autofocusing systems that we've seen so far. First off, the tracking works very well. It's tenacious and it's quite simple to set up. Although I do wish that it was set on by default with initial point autofocusing, but once you set that, you can forget it. And we also find that it has very effective eye detect, but probably the most effective animal eye detect system of any of the cameras. So if you're a big wildlife photographer, this might actually be your number one. 
Number one, I know, I know, it's the Sony a7R 4 We keep talking about how amazing the real-time autofocus tracking is, but it really is the standard that everybody is trying to match. I mean, let's be honest, the Canon EOS R5 is so good because they're trying to do what Sony does. Have one system that you can set up to easily track and yet be intelligent enough to go to things like eyes if you want them to or animals if you want them to. Sony's put a lot of research and development into good deep learning technology in this camera and it shows. So number one, A7R4. Jordan here to talk about video and generally I don't recommend grabbing a high resolution stills camera if video is your top priority. It's very hard for them to downsample those high res images. There are some exceptions. We're going to touch on that. One that's not an exception though is number four, the Sony a7R 4 Now this has excellent video autofocus, but unfortunately it's only 8-bit even if you kick it out to an external recorder and there's no option for 4K 60, which is becoming very common. That puts this in fourth place. Third place is going to go to the Nikon Z7 II, which is actually quite improved over its predecessor. We now get 4K 60 recording with a fairly minor crop when we jump over to that. However, to get the most out of this camera, you're going to need an external recorder. It needs that to unlock log recording, 10-bit recording, and with a paid firmware upgrade, this can do ProRes RAW or B-RAW recording, but it's pretty heavily line-skipped. It's not the best quality, so that's going to keep this in third place. Panasonic's known for video, so it's no surprise that the S1R is coming in at number two. Now, a recent firmware update gave this the option to record 5K up to 30 frames per second, and it also had hugely revised autofocus in video. I would say in a lot of situations, it's now actually usable unless you're using bright primes. But remember, this is still doing some downsampling from that higher resolution sensor, so quality is not as good as the S1 or the S1H, so that's what's going to keep it in second place. Number one is going to go to the Canon R5. Unlike the other cameras, this can actually read out that 8K image. So you get 8K recording, 8K RAW, or 4K that's super sampled from that full 8K image. It is the sharpest video that you're going to find on a consumer mirrorless camera right now. But there's a serious issue. Doing that means this camera will overheat. Firmware has certainly improved it. And if you're out shooting on a day like today where you can see my breath, I think you're going to get by OK. But if you're doing long takes in warm climates and you're not going to have time to cool the camera down, this isn't going to work for you. As long as you're aware of that, this is the best video option right now. So I know that we're doing battery life, Jordan, and you're into all these weird compositions and frames today, but could I please be in front of the bird? Because this is actually very slippery up here, and it, I'm sure it looks weird. Oh, jeez. Now, before we get to our fourth place, I do want to mention that all four cameras have battery grip options, and all four cameras do charge the batteries by USB-C right in camera, which is nice and convenient. But number four, it is going to be the Panasonic S1R. This does have fairly respectable video recording times with the batteries, but that's probably what they were hoping for. But when we look at SEPA ratings, this is going to be the lowest. And we're going to get 380 shots if we're using the back panel, and we're going to only get 330 shots using the EVF. And that's unfortunate because they use these gigantic batteries. They're really big and they're called BLJs, BLJ 31s. And uh, so unfortunately, this is still going to be fourth place. Third place with a very marginal victory, it's going to be the Nikon Z7 II. Now, this is only going to give you 400 shots off the back panel and 330 off the EVF, basically the same as the Panasonic. But I do like the battery is smaller. It is their newest capacity Enel 15C battery, but it is nice that you can use legacy batteries in a pinch, although with fastly reduced battery life. Now in second place with another marginal victory over the Nikon in this case is the Canon EOS R5. Now there are some nice things here. I do like that it still can use legacy batteries from Canon, again with reduced battery life. Uh, it does charge in camera, but this is one that's quite picky with what PD chargers will actually work and which ones won't. That's annoying. But battery life off the back LCD panel is vastly improved, and that's why this is in second place. 490 shots if you're using the back panel. I think a lot of video shooters are going to really appreciate that. However, interestingly enough, through the EVF, we're actually getting 10 less than Panasonic and Nikon, 320 shots, which basically puts it on par. In first place, it's an easy victory for the Sony a7R 4 670 shots off the back panel, 530 shots off the EVF. These are big numbers. And it's all thanks to this amazing battery, the FZ100. I don't know how they do it, but if we had these in our cars, they would be even more efficient. If we had these in submarines, we could get rid of nuclear power. We could power homes with these things. I mean, they're just that good. 
Now when we talk about a high resolution mirrorless shootout, image quality is gonna be of paramount importance. So let's get into that. Number four, it's the Panasonic S1R. Although it has a very respectable 47 megapixel sensor, although dynamic range and low light performance are absolutely usable, very good, compared to the other three cameras, it is at the bottom of the list. Now it does have a saving grace because it has an excellent multi-shot feature where it can add even more resolution by stacking images together. I also love that it compiles that right in camera. It's very easy to use and it'll even correct for wind blowing grass a little bit, water moving in the shot. So landscape photographers are really gonna like it. But let's be honest, multi-shot mode means basically stationary subjects on a tripod. It's fairly limited in its scope. In third place, it's the Canon EOS R5. This is by far the most improved sensor of the bunch. We've been ragging on Canon for quite a few years now, and this now brings it up to a very competitive standard. 45 megapixels, good DR now, good low light performance, but I also really like the fact that the sensor scans so quickly. That's great for video, but for stills, it's also excellent. You can shoot 20 frames per second on this camera, silent shutter mode uh, in 12-bit RAW, and basically not get any strange diagonals. So if you're a wildlife or sports shooter, or you want to shoot on set, this could be a great choice. Second place, it's the Nikon Z7 II. Now, even though this is quite an old sensor, it first came out in the D850 and the Nikon Z7, this is actually a fantastic sensor. 45 megapixels of resolution coupled with the lowest ISO, 64 as its native. Now, what this means is you get incredibly good dynamic range. If you're a landscape photographer, you're gonna love this. You also get great low light performance out of the sensor as well. And that makes this perfectly at home in the studio as well as out in the field. First place, of course, then that means it's the Sony a7R4. I mean, it really comes down to that 60 megapixel resolution. It's substantially more than its competition. And on top of that, the camera still has great dynamic range and low light performance. There's really no downside. So if you've got the lenses to support that resolution, this is gonna give you the best results. All right, so this all brings us back to our last category, price and budget, because who can afford a $5 shake nowadays, right? I mean, that's a, that's, they're all $5 nowadays, actually. But in 1994, 27 years ago, that was an expensive milkshake. So we want you to have enough money left over to buy your milkshakes. Let's get to price. In fourth place, the Canon EOS R5 is the most expensive camera of the bunch. We're going by MSRP, this is $38.99 US, and this price hasn't budged since it first came out. Now, it is a full-featured camera, and I do feel like that price is justified, but if you're on a budget, this is not the one. In third place is the Panasonic S1R. MSRP on this camera is about $36.99 USD, and although you do occasionally see this camera come up for sale, it's rare, whereas the Sony and Nikon above it are on sale often. Now in second place, going by MSRP, it's gonna be the Sony a7R IV. It's gonna sit around the 3499 USD mark. However, I will say that Sony are often very aggressive with seasonal sales. And so if you're willing to wait a little bit, you can often find these for quite a bit less. In first place, it's the Nikon Z7 II. Now, despite this camera being the most recent, it is an excellent price point at $3249 USD. And Nikon's actually been very good at trying to keep their price structure somewhat lower, and it does help forgive the somewhat lower resolution EVF. Otherwise, you've got a versatile platform at a very good price. Well, I guess we just get a plain snow backdrop because we're out of colorful backgrounds. It's conclusion time. Canon wins our rankings by just one point. I mean, really the fact is, Canon and Sony are gonna be your versatile choices. They can handle many different situations. They've got fast burst rates, a state-of-the-art autofocus, and good image quality. You could say that the Canon's a better hybrid video and still shooter. The Sony does give you that awesome 60 megapixel resolution for pure image quality and photography. Either way, excellent choices. In third place, it's the Nikon Z7 II, and really the key thing here is it's just a fantastic camera all around. I mean, it's a good price point. It's a rugged, well-designed body. Image quality is solid. It does have some interesting video capabilities, and I think if you are a Nikon SLR user and you're waiting to move to mirrorless, I think this does make a very compelling choice. Otherwise, if you want to get the lowest price point and still get a great camera, this could also be a good one for you. The S1R is gonna be in fourth place, but let's talk about what it can do well. If you want high video quality 4K60 without having to worry about overheating, this is a solid choice. If you don't need state-of-the-art autofocus and you wanna take advantage of that multi-shot capability, say for landscape photography, this could also be a good choice. But 
Looking at it as far as versatility goes, the other three brands are just better all around cameras. Now we didn't talk about the Leica SL2, but that would be very similar in its rankings with the Panasonic S1R. It is a beautiful body, it is rugged and well sealed, but it is also definitely an extravagant price point. We hope this helps you guys decide which high-res mirrorless camera might be in your future. Please subscribe, click the notification button, and remember, Jordan's challenge is on right now. If you want to see him struggle with a crappy camera and uh, unleash his creative potential, please get us to 300,000 subscribers before Valentine's Day. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you guys soon. Really, the Canon and the Sony are the cameras that are very versatile. They can do many things. Fast birth, rate, uh, birth rates. <laughs>